I'm here again with Jonas today, and we present Half Double. This was a joint work with Google, and so let's get started. The motivation about Half Double is basically Rowhammer. Uh, Rowhammer is a hardware effect that was discovered in 2014, and it basically found out that if you access a physical memory location, very often you have disturbances that can travel, uh, influence neighboring physical locations. Yes, so if you um, accumulate these disturbances over the time frame of 64 milliseconds, which is basically a, a time window of a, um, a refresh of a RAM module, then it can happen that these disturbances manifest as a bit flip in a target row. Since we know that um, bug for a long time, we actually have in place defenses by now. The most common known is the error correcting codes, ECC. And the idea of an ECC code is basically to detect a bit flip and correct um, one bit flip via data word. We also have a more dedicated row hammer defense. It's called targeted row refresh. And the idea here is that you refresh neighboring rows before you can abuse those electrical disturbances. However, we have seen in the past year, past two years, that uh, these TR implementations, the first ones, they were flawed because the resources of these TR implementations can actually be exhausted and then you won't protect against certain um, Warhammer attacks anymore. And in this paper we asked basically the hypothetical question, would a perfect TR with the implementation fix Warhammer overall? So the short answer to that is no. We observed that when hammering with a distance two, sided, distance two pattern on modern commodity devices, so basically you just move double-sided Warhammer out by one row, you observe FIPS on mobile commodity devices. Our five out of seven of those devices were affected out of the box. However, why is this so, so, so impactful? Because those devices have LBDDR4X memory that has active mitigations against Rohammer. So they both deploy ECC and TRR. So what have we seen there? Was this a distance to Rohammer now possible on commodity devices, or is the root cause something completely different? In order to find that out, we, um, we composed a few experiments in the paper where we first built FPGA setup and used one of those teams in that FPGA setup. The benefit of the setup is there that we have complete control over the refreshes and you can even deactivate TR in that case. And the memory there is also not used for, for system memory, so we don't need to actually keep the data valid in order for the FPGA setup to work out correctly. Uh, on the left side, you see the notation we will use in the slides um, from now on. We can see the victim V, that's the target of the Roham attack. We have around it the near aggressors, so the direct neighboring rows, and we have the far aggressors, so the rows which are distance two apart from the victim. So the first experiment we conducted with the FPGA setup was we mounted classic double-sided row hammer on the victim row V, and we simply looked at how fast can we inject the bit flip into V. And it's, the first flip occurred after around uh, 18K hammers. It's approximately 1.2 milliseconds of constant hammering. As we've seen, this fits within the default, within the refresh interval of modern RAM. However, we have an active defense against it, TR. That's the perfect case for TR, where TR activates before these 18,000 activations are reached and issues a refresh to the victim V. So let's go to the second experiments, where we just move this double-sided hammering pattern out by one row. So we're now hammering the far aggressors and again measure the time it takes for us to inject the bit flip. Here we see the effect that we need around 4 million accesses over 270 milliseconds of constant hammering. This is way too large to fit into any, def into any refresh window which is used on modern devices. And now, the effect that we have seen is that if we combine those two, we can create the half double effect. So the idea here is that we use many accesses to this distance two hammers and only a few to the near aggressors. We, and we can choose this with a parameter we call the dilution factor. How long does it take to observe a bit flip when hammering with half double? We see that we take about 20 milliseconds until we found a flip with the half double pattern with that configuration here. So we can see that this fits into the refresh interval of modern RAM. However, as I mentioned at the beginning, we used this distance two hammering pattern on commodity devices to found flips there. 
However, we did not perform any accesses to the near aggressors in that case. So where do they come from? And there, the TR mitigation comes into place because these near aggressor accesses are actually performed by the defense against classic distance one rule double-sided hammering. How does it work? Since we are hammering the far aggressors, after a certain activation count is reached, TR will try to protect the neighboring rebels and issue refreshes to the neighbors. These neighbors are similar to XSS and simply transport the, half, the, the, the Roham effect to the victim V and can cause bit flips there. So this was a real technical explanation with a few experiments, but Jonas, can we exploit that in the wild? That's a really cool question, thank you. So now we found this half double Rohammer effect, but you wanted to know if average users using commodity devices are actually affected. And for this, we built an end-to-end -end exploit. It uses the same technique that's already used for many Rohammer exploits and was actually discovered in 2015, where we target the page frame number of a page table, try to flip a bit that it points to another page table, and then we get full read and write access to the whole memory. In the paper, we defined four challenges we had to solve to make this still possible on modern devices. The first one is allocation of contiguous memory. The second is an alternative to memory templating because of the ECC. The third is memory massaging. And the fourth is a modern bit flip verification to make the end to end exploit more reliable. So the first challenge. Of course, our process is running in the virtual address space, but we need to access um, specific physical rows in the DRAM to make half double possible. So we need some information about the mapping from virtual to physical addresses. Some works use two megabyte pages for that, huge pages, but they can easily be deactivated by the operating system and therefore mitigate the attack, which is not interesting for us. So we use a different approach. We just allocate a lot of memory and then we try to find memory blocks where contiguous virtual memory is mapped into the memory, um, into the physical memory also contiguous. And for this, we use this um, bank, sorry, we use the DRAM addressing functions you see on the left. They're used by the memory controller to map physical addresses to the 16 DRAM banks of our device. And the nice thing about this function is that if the memory is physically contiguous, they create a specific pattern on when which bank is used for the next page. You can see the pattern here. Every color on this graph represents a bank. And for example, the blue bank, it has the specific pattern where there is um, a direct neighboring bank, and then it's a distance of eight, a distance of nine, a distance of eight, and then the whole thing repeats again. And we can detect this through a timing side channel with bank conflicts. The second challenge is um, the memory templating and massaging. Many exploits, prior exploits, use memory templating to find bit flips before trying to exploit them. But because of ECC, this is not working so well anymore. So we just completely skip the templating step. We take this um, contiguous, the, the contiguous memory blocks we found and we unmap all the pages that correspond to every third row in the memory. Then we spray page tables by just repeatedly mapping a virtual, uh, a shared memory file. And then we hammer in the page tables that are hopefully in our victim rows with half double. The nice thing about this pattern is that we reuse um, near aggressors from one hammer as the fire aggressors for the next hammer of the next victim row. And the final building block is the bit flip verification. Because we do not know which bits we will flip in the page table entries if we flip some. And if we flip some bits and the page table entry is corrupt, the CPU will throw an exception and the operating system will kill our exploits. And we don't want that, obviously. So we have to verify if an address is safe to access. And we do this by accessing it transiently inside of a Spectre gadget. You can see the code on the left. The pointer is the address we, pointing to the address we want to check. And we transiently access the pointer and use its value for um, 
than accessing probe. And if we are able to access pointer and get the value, the CPU then accesses our probe address. <coughs> and we can easily see if it was accessed, if it is cached. If probe is not cached, we know that pointer was not successfully accessed, and it's therefore unsafe for us to access. And we'll just skip it and not access it anymore. Cached accessible. And with this, we are able to suppress any corruption faults that could happen. OK, Jonas, so these are all building blocks, but how can you convert it to an end-to-end -end exploit? It's actually quite easy, the combination. So first, we get our contiguous memory blocks. This can take from a few seconds to a few minutes, depending on how lucky we are on which memory blocks we get. Then we spray the page tables. That takes less than a minute, because that's really quick. And then we actually parallelly hammer the victims and already check hammered page table entries with our Bitflip verification. By doing this in parallel, we save a lot of time. And on average, in 45 minutes, we are able to exploit our Chrome Dick Chromebook device. And this gives us full memory, a full memory read and write primitive to the whole physical memory. And from there, you can do pretty much whatever you want. And the cool thing is, this is completely deployable inside an Android app that runs on Android as well as Chrome OS devices. If you are interested in the whole exploit and more details, you can find it on GitHub. It's open source. We are also happy to announce that we passed the artifact evaluation. And if you're interested in more details, like the dense experiment, the contiguous memory detection that's independent of the device, or the physical address bit recovery we are able to do, read the paper. Thank you very much. <laughs>